Tynecastle today sees the 92nd Premier League meeting between these two clubs. And a look at the record book reveals a yawning chasm between them in achievement, with the visitors 37 victories ahead, which means that the home crowd, you can hear them in the background, would like to see and perhaps might even expect some consolation against what appears to be a weakened Celtic side. This, though, is the Hearts team, firstly, which, bar for one change, uh, played well last week against Unfermline, with Steve Fulton in, in place of McKenna. Hearts, I suppose, will play 4-4-2 again, and a key figure in midfield for them will be Slovakian Robert Tomasek, who sustained his long-term knee injury against Celtic at Parkhead in August. This is his third game back. Celtic, an astonishing 10 changes from the old firm game last week, which is not too surprising given the circumstances. The only survivor, Tommy Boyd, and this is last season with the club. Youngsters John Kennedy, Jimmy Smith, C.B. Lynch get the chance with Morton Beekhorst in central defence. Jonathan Gould getting his first start in the Premier League this season. And in midfield, the return of Colin Healy from Coventry, who might just be playing his way towards a cup final next week. The referee today, the unmistakable figure of John Robotham. Well, it's been a day of traditional April showers, some of them very heavy indeed in Edinburgh, but I can tell you the pitch is looking as good as I've ever seen it at Tynecastle. The ball sliding through there, by the way, emphasises that because I was out on the pitch with one or two of the players just before they came on to uh, have a warm-up, and they, they did explain it was feeling very hard to them, and uh, hard decisions for this man this week not just because of uh, suspension today, but injuries that he will have to attend to in the coming days. Right to the left to Guppy. That's a wonderful ball by Guppy. The goalkeeper really under pressure, he still is, and I think the referee has stopped the play. Antti Niemi coming right up amongst a cluster of players following that superb cross by Guppy. He was impeded. So now. Just ran into trouble, but he does get the corner kick. Jimmy Smith at the side. He scored a couple of goals against Arts in that uh, famous victory. Well, the goalkeeper's down again. This time the referee said there was no collision at all. Now, that's extraordinary. I thought the goalkeeper was taken out. Easily taken there. There's a chase. This is Fuller. Well, it's a kind of half-hearted appeal by the Hearts players. Thinking that might have been an infringement, the referee just turns away from it. Real cluster of players on the left hand side there. And this could be Celtic going into the lead here. It is indeed. One goal up. Taken there by Lynch. Right through the middle of that Hodge defence. They were caught very flat. And the youngster gets a goal here, kept his nerve. Yemi almost took him out. It was that race at the end, and Celtic a one up. That goal coming in exactly 12 minutes. It's another chance at it. A decent ball in, it could be a shot on here, just passed. Good effort by McNamara. No jabiety but what he was going to do here as it popped back out to him. Just measuring himself up for it, he wasn't far out. He's getting it back. Picked up well there by Healy. I thought there was a handball there but the referee that play go on and then stopped it with a free kick to Hart. He pointed at the free kick being inside the box and Fuller is onside. Fuller going forward here and puts it in. They're looking across at the linesman who kept this flag down and Hart to equalised. A breakaway almost reminiscent of Celtic's breakaway and their first goal. 
the pressure in their own box with a long ball played forward there and I think the Saudi defence may have thought the flag ought to have gone up. Did I say rain? If it were in Edinburgh, I would say it's a tropical storm. From Boyd, five minutes to half time. Still a beautiful little flick to the outside. Smith going for it himself. That should be put away in it. Is. Second goal again for Lynch. Beautifully operated there. What a day he's having. But really, the run was made by Smith. But how confident and poised he remained. Smith doing all the work here. And with the outside of the foot, he gets his second. Well, we always say that's one for the future, but we look at a boy like that. I think his present is pretty good as well. Fulton. There's Plogan with a chance. Great save there by Gould. Well, they almost caught that Celtic defence napping that time. Up he popped to put it in, and uh, Gould was up for it. Kamara. Here's Silla. A decent ball and almost clicked in again. This time Maloney coming into it. Good play by Silla on this right hand side. Nicely weighted ball that. He did get the cross in, but uh, as the whistle goes, an indication of the way that he's been effective on the left, and the youngster who got the two goals. His opening goal, by the way, was not just about good opportunism and pace, but also a little bit of courage. The other goal, a breakaway as well. Fuller cannot be allowed this kind of latitude, and it was one each, and then at the end, as I said, hard defence slipping uh, and floundering around there, allowing Celtic to advance on him. Good play by Smith. And there was the youngster Lynch to get a second. Half-time score, Hearts 1, Celtic 2. Well, if it uh, stayed like this, with Celtic having fielded 10 changes, virtually a, a, an entirely transformed side from perhaps a stronger side that would have played uh, in an old firm game, and get a victory out of this against a side which has just been pipped for getting into Europe. It's another indication of the huge gulf that exists in personnel and resources between the old firm and the rest. And he knows that, he's played his youngsters today. They've all come up, Trump's especially one, and there's Fuller trying to put it back. And Tomaszek taking an eternity to turn. Fulton didn't zip into that. You can see he tried to get a little bit of leverage for himself. And there's a stab shot there by Fulton. Boyd. Good move by Boyd that time. Guppy seen a lot of the play in the left. Loney. We'll get the free kick for that. This is a, a very elusive and fast player when he goes across the defence like that. Norms inevitably. Somebody will follow. And that's in. That's a beautiful goal. Maloney, judged to perfection. Well, there's so many high depth for taking three kicks at Celtic Park, and he joins the company. He's beautifully swept in. Judgment and control and no chance for Niemi. 
Celtic now taking what is a commanding lead so early in this half. And Mayberry easily beaten in the tackle again. Left for dead, in fact. Guppy. Oh, just struck out there. Severin read the danger, came across quickly. But Hart's uh, pretty weak in defence on the right-hand side. Trying another one just off there by Mahi. What a great effort. Right underneath the crossbar, and he had to be. That was heading for the net. I think there's going to be a hard substitution. I think it's Hamill who's coming on. Thomas Shake. Not surprisingly, he hasn't had a, a particularly effective game. It's turned by Hamill. Well, Flogo must have realised that was going to be intercepted and Smith away like a flash. Silla supporting. The tackle wasn't good enough. Lynch. in again, Maloney, his second, and the Hearts defence ripped apart there, 4-1. And the four Celtic goals have been scored by the youngsters, reminiscent of the night they came here in the League Cup and did something similar. He took that goal well, I mean, he, he was side on to the goal. And he had to be very precise with the way he finished, and he was. 20 minutes gone, it's all over. Mahe, out logo. Just runs into trouble again, Silla. Maloney played on the right-hand side here. This could be another one, a great save now. Smith again, picking it up here and letting fly. And uh, Fulton uh, coming on. Gary Wills on now in his place. And Guppy floating that in, not to any effect this time. Fuller on his own again, surrounded by Celtic jerseys. Ooh, that was almost an own goal that time. So harassed have they been. Well, now, watch this, watch it coming across. It looked like a corner kick to me. That's for our hearts here, but no. There's been a lot of promise in some of the play outside the penalty area, but like the real dig, as I said, Fuller's been left to try and create something on his own from time to time. Silla, I don't know whether he meant that or not, but Goppy picked it up all right. Feels for the penalty, and it is. Maybury ends a pretty disastrous afternoon for himself by conceding that penalty. Now, there's going to be an argument about who should take it, or is there? They're both in a hat-trick. They're arguing about who should take the penalty. Good on them. Give me the ball. It's my ball. <laughs> He's not giving it away. He says... <laughs> He's pointing to the dugout and saying it, they're telling, they're telling me I have to take it. That's extraordinary. Good friends, of course. Well, it's Bob Maloney taking it, and he missed it. I wonder if Mr Lynch will say anything to him about that. And in fact, the final whistle goes a, a remarkable 
nothing to that. Two young men desperate to get a hat trick. Maloney won the argument, debate, conversation. Call it what you like. All done, I, I suppose, in good nature. Well, they are strikers, and strikers are very jealous of uh, statistics. So there we are. Well, the pick of the, the four goals that Celtic scored, I have to choose, and they were all good goals, Maloney's free kick. Exquisitely judged. Beautifully flighted into the net. And although it doesn't bear any resemblance to Cup uh, final side, I do believe that that will be a heartening performance for Celtic and the supporters before the Cup final. Final score, Hearts 1, Celtic 4. Martin, the quality of that uh, performance was, uh, I think, emphasised by the young players in particular, mm -hmm. very reminiscent of your League Cup victory here a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, it was actually, you know, and some of the similar personnel in many aspects. Uh, Jimmy Smith, who I thought was absolutely outstanding today for us. Uh, Colin Healy is coming back, and you could see that the um, the loan period at Coventry has certainly helped his uh, self-confidence and things like that. But overall, it was a terrific effort. Two lads vying over a penalty in the last minute of the game. <laughs> you know, I think the whole hullabaloo probably put uh, Sean off, but I was delighted with, all, obviously, all of them. Well, the nation was holding its breath because they want to know who did you want to take the penalty because they were pointing to the dugout at the time. Well, I, I stayed out of it, and I honestly thought Tommy Boyd should have taken <laughs> over and should have realised that uh, he is the captain of the team and he should have had the say. So, as it, as it turns out, Boyd will get the sack because of it. Um, <laughs> what had happened was that uh, Sean Maloney had already scored a hat-trick this year and uh, so some members of the bench who shall remain nameless were uh, shouting that uh, young Ling should get it I stayed out of it I've got to say but in the whole hollow below I think Sean's concentration went uh, Celtic's cause was aided today by our, uh, our poor performance and uh, I don't know I mean I'm sure that the, the result in the, the uh, Livingston and family game before and had some bearing on the game but uh, saying that I'm still extremely disappointed the way we played especially in the second half